We give thanks to God for the wonderful morning that we're able to have here together. It's a joy to welcome Grace and Hannah to help out with our music this morning. Thank you for being here. It's a wonderful joy to be here after vacation Bible school this last week. How many of you got a chance to participate with VBS in some way, shape, or form? Yeah, look, we had a good number of volunteers that came out. Well, today's service is going to be a real treat. We're going to have some of the kids who helped out with the skits help out with the order of worship today. So it'll be a traditional order of worship, but we'll have some volunteers to get up and help us read. And then we also have a treat because they were all in a skit as different characters during the week, and we'll get a chance to see some of those skits, um, some of the character videos that we made um, by our own David Young, who put those together. So thank you so much for that. Now, I do have a, a brief sad note that I wanted to share. Some of us may remember from the early 80s, there was an associate pastor named Don Ellerman who worked here at the church. Well, I received a call this morning that he actually passed away this last week. Um, he had had a couple other pastorates in Iowa, up in Michigan. He passed away um, on the 9th, and they're going to do a service on the 20th, but it is going to be up in Wisconsin, where, where his family's from. So if you kept in touch with him, if you knew him, um, please be in prayer for him and his family. And for the wonderful ministry that he did as part of this church and part of our church family. So as we go through the order of service today, it'll be a fun chance for us to get introduced to some of the characters that helped out with all the kids during VBS. It'll also be a chance for us to be reminded about the many different ways God is good. So we'll have the first song, we'll have some hand motions, so we're going to do a little bit of that for the first part, for the first song. And then as we do the, the sermon message, we'll talk about God being our neighbor and what does it mean to have God as our neighbor as we've been talking about the kingdom of heaven? What does that look like for us? So I just want to say thank you all for coming to worship with us. Let us now turn our hearts to God in prayer and lay our burdens at his feet as we come to worship him. Dear Lord God, we give you thanks for this wonderful morning that we are able to come and gather here together. We give you thanks for our friends and family, for the many joys and blessings that we get to enjoy this summer. Lord, we also give you thanks for the many ways that you have been at work in us to keep us strong in times of struggle, to keep our hearts strong in times of doubt and fear. And Lord, that no matter where we go, no matter what we feel, you are good. So Lord, we give you thanks for this day and for every day. And all God's people said together, Amen. All right. So now I'd like to invite Todd to come up and be our liturgist for this morning. But before he speaks... We're going to have a short video about his character. Welcome to Hello with Dr. Rhino Riley. Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Rhino Riley. I drink a lot of things in the savannah, and tea is one of the best of them. Tea is one of the many things that is beautiful. Actually, it's the only thing that's a for. Green tea, lemon tea, oolong tea, foolong tea. But one tea you should drink the most is English breakfast black tea. Why? Because I say so. But there are many other teas in the world, so when you get a chance, drink some. It's unfair that you can't drink all the teas in the world. Because there's too many. <laughs> Deep breath. They love it. Oh. <laughs> Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning. I'm Todd Hammond. Welcome. We're glad you are here, and especially our visitors. If you would like information about our church, please stop by the podium on the right as you leave and talk with our greeter, Betty Taylor. Also, if you have young children, we have a nursery downstairs to the left as you exit the sanctuary. For our older children, please sit with your parents after the time with the children. To those of you sitting near the center aisle, don't forget to sign the friendship book and pass it along to others in your pew. Today, we have several announcements to share with you. The August newsletter deadline is tomorrow, July 15th. To celebrate Caroline Newberry's birthday, please come to, C to, to, to the CFLC for birthday cake. Tanya Young and Suma, Sista Suma Simpson will do a minute for mission. Good 
Hello, there we go. Good morning. <laughs> so we had a wonderful, wonderful, amazing week at VBS this week. Uh, we had 78 kids that joined us. We actually had 10 kids that came in the day of. Um, we started, it was fantastic. We had 50 volunteers. Um, we do want to thank everybody that helped us out that way. Everybody in rec, snow cones, snacks, all of our shepherds. Miss Julie in music. Oh. Uh, our craft and our imagination station, our Bible story. Everybody that helped us decorate and that helped us take down those decorations. That was so wonderful. We we're so blessed for that. Um, soundboard. Soundboard was wonderful. Who helped our tech? <laughs> Everybody that donated Thursday night cookies that gave and that also donated for the snacks during the week. We really, truly appreciate that. We were very, very blessed in that. Um, we also want to thank all the congregation. Even though you didn't come, you guys helped support us and your prayers were very much appreciated. We had a fantastic week. We collected this week $405.00 that we donated to Lindbergh Lights the Way. That was for the kids. They brought in their um, silver coins one day, their pennies the other day, and then their dollars the next day. And in four days, we were able to raise $405 for the, for the kids for that. So we were very, very blessed. Um, we also received a note that we want to read. This one's really, really cool. It says, to everyone who has helped with Roar VBS this week. We are so thankful for all your hard work. We are visiting from Scotland, and it has meant so much to our family for Rory and Isla to join us all this week. Our country is very secular, and many of our kids' activities are not Christian-based. So the opportunity to do VBS this summer in America has been such a blessing. We love hearing the kids singing God is Good with such passion and we know we'll be listening to the CD in our car over and over. Thank you to everyone who has given time to organize, lead, prepare, and love our kids this week. What you are doing is extremely significant in building God's kingdom, and we love that our kids got to receive from it. With love, Todd and Ruth. And it was, a, it was such a joy to hear that and to, to know they were so excited to be here with us all the way from Scotland and to join us. So that was, that was really neat. Uh, I think that, that's about it. We do have a little plug for Save the Date next year, July 13th. So <laughs> we're already planning again. Thank you again so much for everything. We, we truly appreciate it. We also collected 85 jars of peanut butter and jelly throughout the week. That goes to Isaiah 58 um, mission. So we thank you again. We couldn't have done it without you. It was such a great week. We still go back and think about the songs. <laughs> it's great. It was thank, great. You. thank you. Thank you. Pray for those that are sick and those listed in the bulletin. Now let us join together as we continue to worship God. Please stand as you are able and join me in our call to worship this morning. In God alone we put our trust. We will not be put to shame, for the Lord is our strength, not the esteem of the prowess. Show us your ways, God. Teach us to follow the will of your Son, Jesus. The Lord instructs sinners and redeems the meek, for we all are in need of a Savior. Now, for our opening song, stay standing. We're going to do some hand motions here. 
And we're going to kind of go through some of the words here so that way you can kind of see a little bit of how we're doing the hand motion. Now, can we see the first slide of the lyrics? Wherever you lead me, I'm going to follow. I'm trusting you, God. You are good. Now, this is kind of the chorus, the refrain that gets played throughout the whole part. So if you were looking or leading, going to follow, you're going to go like this, right? You kind of go like a little dip. Wherever you lead, God, I'm going to follow. And then how does it go? I'm trusting you, God. You are good. So you do. I'm trusting you. Like a little huh. I'm trusting you, God. You are good. Okay? So let's practice. Ready? Ever you lead me, I'm going to follow. I'm trusting you, God. You are good. Okay, great job. All right. So now we're going to go to the next slide. Life will get crazy. Life will get crazy. Wild and amazing. I'm trusting you, God. You are good. All right, I think you got it. So why don't we go ahead and cue the music. If you want to sing along, you can. If you want to just do the hand motions, you can do the hand motions. But this is what we were doing all this last week, so... A great job. Give yourselves a round of applause. All right, you can go ahead and have a seat. Now, you might think, oh my goodness, what a repetitive, boring song. But for elementary school kids to know that when life gets crazy, wild, and amazing, I'm going to trust God. And that's the refrain that gets over and over, repeated over and over again for these kids. 
So thank you so much for, for participating in that, just a little taste of VBS. But now I've got a special treat because we've got two folks that are going to come up and help with our prayer of confession and assurance of forgiveness. So I'd like to invite Grant and Daniel to come on up here. And while they're coming up, we're going to play their video of their commercial from the Vacation Bible Story skit. Detective Irvin Carter here, Savannah Victims Unit. Detective Ike Carter here, ditto. When we're investigating the scene of crime, it's important to see all the evidence clearly. That's why we never go anywhere without our sunglasses. Justice never fades, and it looks cool in shade. In stores now. Who pray who prays for you? Where, Where has your faith impacted another? For our witness to others is a testament for our own faith. Though we may find ourselves striving for pride and ego, we are called to compete in kindness, mercy, and grace for others. The knowledge and acceptance of Jesus alone is to put aside the old self and embrace the new self that will endure. Though the world may laugh and baffle, baffle at our faith, let us not lose heart. For it is the power of Christ in us that is transforming the world. It is not our own skill or our efforts, but the power of God in us. May we always be grateful for the life and spirit of God that is redeemed us by the power of Jesus' name. may be seated. For the children's moments today, we're going to have a brief slideshow to show some of the photos of all the fun stuff that we were able to do this last week. So thank you again for your prayers, for your support, for your cookies, for your time and energy to make this ministry happen.
same So hold on tight and follow real close God is good and he's in control Clap your hands like this Now let's pump this Stop your feet the same transformation to see our church go from a regular place of worship with hallways and rooms to becoming the African savanna filled with kids making crafts and hearing Bible stories and playing games and having snow cones. It is such a joy and a wonder, so thank you all again. So now I'd like to invite you to stand as you are able and pass the peace of God with each other and with your neighbor. And if you see anybody wearing the maroon t-shirts, those were some of our volunteers, so give them a special thank you. So for our musical offering that we have today, we have Hannah and Grace Vanderteig. They also were part of the skit. So we are going to have a sh few short videos of their two characters as well. Do you ever have trouble reaching the top branch or shelf? Wish you could stretch your neck up a little higher to see the greener grass on the other side of the fence? Never fear, Giselle Taller here to make sure you're able to reach those lofty goals. And how best to do that, you ask? Well, with a ladder, of course. The San Diego Zoo has a room full of ladders, so we're giving them away to all of you safari adventurers, first come, first serve. Now whatever you can reach will be within your reach. Just look at Dr. Bev Bahati here. Usually in the safari when we're watching our animals, we climb a tree to stay out of their sight, but Dr. Bev Bahati here just has to hide behind a blade of grass. But now with my ladder, Dr. Beth Bahati can see everything. Take the first step right now. I'll see you soon. Leona 
big cat here to give a safety lesson from the savannah. I'm talking about ear safety. Living with and studying lions for so long has taught me that you can hear a lion's roar from five miles away. That's why I'll never go without these, my Super Savannah silencers. When I put these on, and I'm protected from their mighty roars. Just to make sure everyone heard that right, I'll repeat it one more time. Are these things working right? Yesterday they were working so perfectly. Anyway, let's get back to where we were. Make sure to always wear yours out on safari too. And the most important thing, and the one thing you can never forget, What a blessing we have today. So now I'd like to invite up James Fitzpatrick to do our first scripture reading. And as he comes, we'll watch his video. Hello, Safari Adventurers, and welcome to my new TV show. Global Adventures with Arkansas Flats. We travel the earth finding the world's wildest places. This week, we travel to the African savannah, one of the wildest places on earth. This is the land of legend, with legendary creatures to discover. Like the giraffe, the rhinoceros, and the king of all beasts, 
the lion. To help us understand these magnificent creatures, we brought along a team of animal experts. Let's meet them now! Here we have Dr. Ryan O'Reilly, the most knowledgeable rhino expert in the world. And this is Professor Felicia Feathers, our resident expert on the bizarre and beautiful African hoopo bird. Dr. Bev Bihati works at the National Zoo in Washington, D.C. and knows more about the Cape Buffalo than anyone else on Earth. Leona Big Cat has lived on the savannah for 10 years, studying the majestic African lion. And this is Giselle Talier, head zookeeper for giraffes at the San Diego Zoo. We've given these animal experts an important challenge. Find a spot somewhere within this vast savanna that would provide a safe refuge for all these animals. A place with lots of grass for the cape buffalo, muddy wallows for the rhinoceros, trees for the giraffes and the hoopoe birds, and big game for the lions. And after many weeks of searching, they found it! A majestic river ravine called Benevolence Valley. The local government has agreed to donate the land to the Global Wildlife Trust. As long as our safari crew keeps good relations with the local people, and especially doesn't disturb the Shrine of the Faithful, a beautiful and ancient location that houses their most treasured artifact. An artifact which they claim proves conclusively that God is good. As long as our safari team stays away from that artifact, the Nature Preserve is a done deal. So, let's check in with our research team now and see how they feel about this great day. Well, I feel a mite overdressed. This morning's scripture reading is from the Old Testament. It's from Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 9 through 14. Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning. Then the Lord your God will make you most prosperous in all the work of your hands and in the fruit of your womb, the young of your livestock and the crops of your land. The Lord will again delight in you and make you prosperous, just as he delighted in your ancestors. If you obey the Lord your God, and keep his commands and decrees that are written in this book of the law, and turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and soul. Now what I am commanding you today is not too difficult for you or beyond your reach. It is not up in heaven so that you'll have to ask, who will ascend into heaven to get it and proclaim it to us so we may obey it? Nor is it beyond the sea, so you will have to ask, who will cross the sea to get it and proclaim it to us so we may obey it? No, the word is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart so you may obey it. The New Testament reading comes from Luke chapter 10, verses 25 through 34. On one, in, on one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit er eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied, how do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this, and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself. So he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too a Levite, when he, came to, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The word of the Lord. This passage, the parable of the Good Samaritan, has been used throughout the centuries to show what it means to be merciful. To be merciful. For me, for a long time growing up, I always figured a Samaritan was a nice person. Because when you hear Good Samaritan, it has to do with someone who happens to have no involvement in what's going on. But when something bad happens, they want to help. They're the Good Samaritan. What we've sometimes miss is that in this Bible story, Jesus is talking about a Samaritan. And for Jewish people who lived in Judea, the Samaritans 
were a dirty, unclean, foreign, ignorant people. They worshipped the wrong God, they worshipped in the wrong ways, they had the wrong customs. And it kind of was like a Hatfield and McCoy's type thing, where if you saw a Samaritan and you were a Jewish person, you walked on the other side of the street. If you had to go through Samaria, like if you were a Jewish person, you kept your head down and you just went because you didn't want to get caught up in something because there might be violence, there might be insults hurled, there might be rocks hurled, you might get robbed or all sorts of nasty stuff. The Jewish people and the Samaritans argued, they fought, they didn't like each other. All they did was complain about how the other people were doing it wrong. Well, wouldn't you know it, this story talks about a Jewish man going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. This is in the country of of Judea, so this is Jewish country. So he was going down and gets set upon by robbers, beaten, side of the road. Then there are three people who walk by. The first is is a priest, sees the man and keeps on walking. The second is a Levite, sees the man and keeps on walking. And then you have a Samaritan walking through Jewish country. sees a Jewish person beaten on the side of the road. Picks the man up. Takes him to an inn. Takes care of his wounds. Pays the innkeeper and says, if there's any more expenses, put it on my account. I will pay for this person. So in the story, it's not just about being nice to people. It's about Who are we being nice to? And who is being nice to us? You see, in the story, it's just a story. There was no man who got left by the side of the road. There wasn't really a priest and a Levite. This was a story Jesus tells to illustrate a point. Because the very beginning of this New Testament reading, it said a teacher of the law was sitting there asking Jesus, how do I inherit eternal life? And for the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about what does it mean to inherit eternal life? And you can hear in this man's voice the, what do I have to do to guarantee I get to heaven? What do I have to do to guarantee I get to heaven? And Jesus says, what's written in the law? Do what's written in the law. And then the man says, well, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus says, very good. You know what to do to inherit eternal life. And then there's this little turn of phrase where it says, but then the teacher, wanting to justify himself, asked, who then is my neighbor? Now, let's say you're at work or at school and you're doing a group project. And you say, okay, everybody needs to do their own part here, right? So you'll do part A, you'll do part B, and I'll do part C. And one of the people gets up and says, but what if my part really isn't any of these parts? What if I don't really want to do any of these parts? What's your first thought? You don't want to be part of this group, do you? You're already looking for a way to get out of the requirements. We've just basically sat down and got started, and already you're looking for a way out. You're looking for a way to to, to skirt around the responsibilities that are now rested upon you. And that's kind of what the Pharisee was getting at. He said, who is my neighbor? Do I, have, like, do I have to be nice to everybody? Do I have to be nice to people who are mean? Do I have to be nice to the people who live next door to me, my family? I can be nice to those people. So Jesus tells this story about a Samaritan about a good Samaritan. And then at the end of the story, Jesus says, who was a neighbor to the man who was beaten on the side of the road? Who was the neighbor? Was it the priest? Was it the Levite? Or the Samaritan? And the the teacher of the law couldn't bring himself to say Samaritan because even to say the word Samaritan from a Jewish person was like a... So he said, the one who showed mercy. The one who showed mercy. And Jesus says, yes. For us today, in our lives, are there people 
that need our help, to whom we could show mercy, could we be the one to go and show mercy to people? And a lot of times we think ourselves as Christians as that's our responsibility, to go and help, to help the less fortunate, to serve. But a closer reading of the story shows that it's not so much about giving help. It's not so much about us being the Samaritan. The story is about us being the person beaten on the side of the road. Who is a neighbor to you? Who will you receive help from? Who was a neighbor to the person on the side of the road, Jesus asked. And in a sense, he was asking a deeper question, not just to the teacher of the law, but to each and every one of us, and asking us, do you need help? Do you need a Savior? And are you willing to accept help for maybe an unexpected person? Are you willing to accept help from maybe someone you didn't think could help you? Are you willing to see yourself as a person in need so that someone can come and minister to you. This last week in our Bible studies when we were talking about this passage in some of the the discussion groups, as it came up, we were talking about the importance of serving others and then also the importance of letting ourselves be served by others. Because ultimately, if we say... I don't need anything, I'm good, I got it all taken care of, I don't need your help, then we have to recognize Jesus is the one who comes to help us. And if we don't say, yes, I need help, if we don't say, yes, I need a Savior, if we look at our life and say, everything is perfect, everything is fine, I don't need any help, then Jesus is going to say, then you don't need a Savior. Now, I'm not saying that we should all go out into rough neighborhoods and get beat up and left on the side of the road. I'm not saying we should go look for trouble. But I am saying we do need to admit that we've all turned away from God. We've all been bad friends. We've all turned away from our loved ones. We've said hurtful things. We've done name-calling. We've tried to get out of responsibility that we knew was our fault. And in all of those things, God says, do you need help feeling better? Do you need help in your soul? Do you need help in your spirit? Do you need help in your physical body? And we need to be willing to say, yes, Lord, I need help. And our Lord Jesus Christ, who came and died on the cross is the one who comes and he is the one who shows mercy to us. He is the one who gives mercy to those who ask. He is the one whose love and compassion holds those people who most need it. So when someone asks how you're doing, is there any way I can help? And we say, no, 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 I'm fine. I got everything. I don't need any help. When we get home at night, Let's not forget to ask Jesus for help and say, Jesus, I do need your help. Because if we turn our back on the one who gives mercy, the one who gives life, then the rest of our days are going to be a struggle. But if we can ask Jesus Christ for help, if we can ask for his mercy, if we can ask our neighbors for help when we need it, if we can ask for ways for other people to minister to us, we will find that God's mercy grows. Our life grows. Even here on earth, we will see God's kingdom come. For God's mercy isn't just for those who live a good life, do everything on their own, and then get to heaven. Get to heaven. Heaven, wherever heaven is. But heaven can be here. When we receive mercy and when we give mercy. So friends, in this passage, let us remember that the priest and the Levite who walk by, they're not just the Jewish priests and the Jewish Levites, because in the Jewish law, they were commanded to help. 
the Jewish priest and the Jewish Levite in the story of today would be a pastor was walking down the street and saw someone in need and walked on the other side of the street. An elder of the church was walking down the street and saw someone in need and walked on the other side of the street. And then an atheist, a Muslim, a Buddhist was walking down the street and saw a person in need and they showed mercy. And Jesus asked, who is our neighbor that we should love as ourselves? The one who shows mercy. So it's my prayer that as we go forth from here, we might be the ones to carry mercy. We might show mercy, we might receive mercy, and we might be known for our love. Let's pray. Dear Lord God, we give you thanks for this morning, for the opportunity to be able to come together here to celebrate your mercy and your love, to minister to others and to have them minister to us, to admit, Lord, that we need your mercy and your love for our hearts and our souls. For, Lord, you are the one who shows the most mercy and compassion. You are the one, Lord, who is on the outside reaching in to our hearts. So, Lord, for that we give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'd like to invite you all to please stand now as you are able and let's join together as we sing, O God of every nation. may be seated. I'd like to invite Rena Simpson to come forward and as she comes forward we will see the video from her part in the skit this last VBS week. Energy! Sometimes life can be scary, especially when you're super tired and you don't know what to do about it. Well I know what you can do about it. 
Use my new energy drink. Holy hoopo, four and a half hour energy. So you can flap your wings all day long, just like a hoopo bird. Well, maybe just part of the day. I had one just a bit ago. As you can see, it really works. Don't be scared. Try, try it now. Please join me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under the conscious life, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you have given us so many good things, so many blessings. Lord, that we give you all the glory. And Lord, in times when life is struggles, when life is hard, you are good. So Lord, we pray for those who grieve, for those who struggle and suffer. We pray for our country and the world. Lord, we pray for your spirit to be made known in the world. Help us to be your light. And now, hear us as we pray together the prayer you taught your disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power As our ushers come forward, let us know that our gifts this morning go to support the life and ministry of this church, the ministry of God. May you give generously, knowing that all that we have has come from our gracious Lord.
Lord, we lift up the many gifts of this congregation. May they be a blessing to our community and our world. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all for worshiping with us this morning. It's my joy and prayers. and it's, I love doing this. Sunday morning is great. It's been a long week of BBS with lots of kids, so an extra special thanks again to everyone. For Todd, for being our liturgist, for the Vanderteiks, for helping us out with music, for all the people who help out with um, everything for a Sunday morning, from ushers and liturgists, and for all the kids who helped out this morning. And Thank you all for clapping at their videos. They are a very talented bunch, so make sure to give them an extra special high five today. So now may the God of grace and love and mercy be with you this day and every day. Go in peace. Amen.